this is uh, an album that if you were to release it again, I, I th- This is hip hop album debate. Let's get the conversation going. Ain't no time to waste. Yeah, the podcast that I know you've been wanting. They talking real hip hop. Got everybody talking. Let's go. Yeah, keep it 100 and stay true. Hosted by my homie Q. Tune in and come through. Yeah, this be the spot. The number one place all day. This is hip hop album debate. Let's go. Hey, yeah. Welcome to hip hop album debate the podcast this is q and this is episode 47 and this debate topic is twister kamikaze what's up man you guys think it was a classic it was dope it was regular or or in weed terms was it reggie (laughs) or was it garbage so um yeah, but before we get into this debate topic, uh, you guys be sure to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Again, go ahead and be messy. Spread, spread this gossip. But this good gossip. This is Hip Hop Abba Debate, the podcast. You dig it? Okay, so... um. First and foremost, I'm a little under the weather, so if I don't sound like myself, uh, yeah, I got a little head cold, so you guys bear with me, man, um, and I'll be brief uh, with this episode, but um, yeah, so Twister Kamikaze, um, my first encounter with Twister was when he was the artist formerly known as Tongue Twister, and um you know, he was just another rapper, man, at that time. In fact, uh, I put him in the category of Snow. <laughs> Y'all remember Snow, the, uh, the white rapper? The farmer. I need your boom boom now. Yeah, that guy right there. So I kind of put Twist in that category. You know, he was just rapping fast. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry, Tom Twister. Okay, a few years later... Get it wet. And uh, didn't know that was the same guy, actually, to a little later on. But um, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm digging it. And then again, you know, being from the South, we care about the lyrics, but it got a bump in the trunk. And uh, they get it wet. Boy, that, 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 that bump. And then uh, you got Do or Die, Poe Pimp, featuring Twister. Boy, yeah, <laughs> you a player if you can get them ends and get the dividends, but you a pimp if you can get the same hoe want to freak your friend. Because I studied P-I-M-P-ology, but logically be loving these whole biology. Obviously, well, <laughs> yeah, man. So, okay, now we, we, we rocking with Twister, at least in my neck of the woods. And uh, so some years later, okay, he hit us with, with the uh, Kamikaze. And uh, he hooked up with Kanye. Kanye had a way going on at the time. Uh, you know, him and Just Blaze kind of had that style of production that, um, you know, that was sampling a lot of soul music and, and uh, was speeding it up. And so uh, I thought it made sense for Twister to get with Kanye. Why not? You know, they both from Chicago. Um, and I I just thought it made sense, you know. They it really meshed, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. It they really meshed. I think Twister did extremely well with Kanye's production. Uh, not just Kanye production, of course. You know, you had uh other guys producing on this album as well. But the two songs I'm thinking about is uh Slow Jams and Overnight Celebrity. I thought Twister. Really did extremely well with those two singles. So of course, that what, well, slow jams is what made me buy the album. But then when I listened to the album, I was really impressed with it uh, from the beginning. You know, uh, uh, they got to come and get me. Here I am, come and get me. I mean, that was a fire opening track. Um, 
Then you know you got uh, it followed up with the kill us all, kill us all, kill us all. Then you got the pimp on, you know, feature a ball, two short, had done one, uh, speaking on the track, and and then you know, <laughs> around this time, man, I think it was a lot of people was wanting to kind of step into that that pimp ramification, and. Um, I mean, let's be real, man. It, we, you you got to really sell it, man. You know, if you a drug dealer, you rap about selling drugs. You really have to sell that persona. If you don't, then people not gonna buy into it, and they it'll appear that you're being fake. And I think um, you know it was it was a lot of rappers was doing that. Everybody had to make a pimp song, and um, I just. I don't know, man. I just didn't buy into a lot of rappers doing that. Uh, but this, I did buy into, you know, because Twister, they've been talking about that. You know, he was talking about that. Him and, uh, you know, Do or Die. So I bought into it, you know, Pimp On. And it was a dope song, too. Uh, then you got the, uh, the Still Feel So Good. Like, a, that's a laid back track, man. You could just ride through your hood and, um, Man, just a smooth song, Jazzy Fate, Jazzy Fate killing the hook, and uh, you know you got the Badonka Don't that was for the for the Gentlemen's Club. You know you had to do that back then, and again, uh, he sold it well. We bought into it. You know, it, uh, it wasn't a gentleman, Gentlemen's Club that you couldn't go to that didn't play this song at that particular time. Uh, you know you had a good you had a feature from. Um, Ludacris, uh, them boys, they were spitting. Uh, like a twenty, like a twenty-four. I forgot about that. That was another, you know, banger for the strip club, but not like Badonka Don't. I think uh, Badonka Don't was the better one, but P- they was playing it though. Make the ass roll like some twenty-fours. Then you had Tip on now. Uh, you know, you got Hope with CeeLo. So there, there was a well balanced album, man. Uh, and I forgot about my favorite song on the album and video. One of my favorite videos, "So Sexy," featuring R. Kelly. Man, that song, that video really shines the light on Chicago that I think don't get the shine that it should get when it comes to hip hop. Because when you think about Chicago, you just think about you know the 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 game banging side of it, but you also got that side of Chicago, you know, downtown that people, you know, travel to. People from all over the world come to, uh, you know, Michigan Avenue and, and uh, you know, get 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 that vibe of downtown Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So, that's one of my uh, favorite songs of uh, 2010, decade, as well as my favorite video. So, uh, no, nobody left a comment, a voice comment. Nobody left the uh, any comments on social media. So, uh, oh, I didn't tell you guys my take on it. I apologize, man. Again, I'm under weather. Uh, I, I think this album is a classic, man. I think I think it's a classic. Uh, I give it a classic. I still listen to it to this day. It doesn't sound dated. Uh, you know, it still sounds good. I think this this is uh, an album that if you were to release it again, I, I, it would sound good. I mean, it wouldn't sound again uh, dated or outdated or then or anything. So, I think that plays a part too when you talk about classic albums. Some classic albums they sound good, but from a nostalgic standpoint, where you have some classic albums you can re-release. And they would do well. And I think this is one of those albums. But nevertheless, uh, let's see what the people had to say. We're going to go to the polls. And uh, Kamikaze, 0% said it was regular. 0% said it was garbage. 25% said it was dope. 75% said it was a classic album. And there you go. The People Speaks. So this is your boy Q, episode 47. 
Uh, again, this is an ongoing conversation. Y'all let your boy know uh, your thoughts on this album. Drop me a comment, and uh, we're going to chop it up. All right? Y'all holler back at your boy Q. I'm gone. Peace.